Good evening, everyone. How we doing? How we doing? All right. Sound is good. Looks like we're up and running. Okay. Yeah, okay. So that we uh, messed around a little bit with our quality of our stream tonight, did some tweaking, and uh, we're still not even running at full capacity. Uh, and you can see the clarity of this thing is unbelievable. So, um, pretty excited about that. Um, got a little bit to talk about in the way of weather here coming up, a couple of systems coming in. Um, we had an interview today with uh, the Daily Journal out of Johnson County, and uh, she was a nice lady. Um, we're in a section called Pushing Boundaries. Uh, it's basically a section where um, they do write-ups about companies who are uh, you know, making things happen, trying to, to get going and all that good stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, we look to be in there, I think, on Saturday, and we'll talk a little bit about you know, what we're doing, how we're doing it, and all that good stuff. So um, we'll take some questions here, guys, if anybody has anything. Um, if you all have Facebook, make a status, tell everybody we're live. If they've got questions about weather, get it out there. Bamchase.net. Um, doing a live stream, sitting here and talk some weather this evening. Let's see here. I like the new logo way better. Yeah, the logo's nice. Thank you. The logo is nice. Um, I'm going to still kind of let the viewers kind of trickle in here if we can. You guys are entering in here to the um, to the video screen. At the top of the video screen, you'll see click here for live chat. If you want to enter the chat room, it's orange text right above the viewers. Right now it says viewers 11 on my screen. Also says viewers 11 over on his screen. Hit the click here for live chat. It'll uh, bring up a new window and or a new tab, and then you'll uh, see the chat room. Uh, be sure to go in on the right side, hit set name, and uh, go to temporary name, and make yourself a uh, user account here. Just a quick user account. Just so that way we have an easy way to, if you ask a question or whatever, let us know. Uh, Dustin, if you're still watching, um, you asked about the uh, long range Friday after Friday in the next week. We're going to talk about that around 8.45 tonight, uh, here in about, a, in about a half an hour. Um, we're going to take some questions and stuff first, and then we'll get into some of the data and what we're seeing here uh, in just a little bit. So so stay tuned, and we'll get that, uh, we'll, we'll cover that. We're going to talk about that. everybody think of this cold weather. Um, hey, we talked about it last week in the Q&A. We knew it was coming. We told you it was coming. Um, you know, that's one thing we, we try to uh, do here is, is, you know, inform ahead of time and, uh, you know, and build a following due to, due to our weather prediction. So, um, we take pride in that and we, we hope that you all enjoy being able to know the weather quite a bit ahead of, ahead of time. I had a lady ask me today, she says, what's the most dangerous situation you've ever been in? And uh, it's like, been, we've been in some dangerous situations. Um, yeah, she wanted to do a, uh, basically she just was kind of asking us what we do and how, how we do it and all this other stuff. We were kind of going over with her how we were founded and, you know, 
all that other good stuff. And um, you know, <clears throat> it should be a pretty good article. Um, you know, earlier we posted a picture of uh, us eating some McDonald's. Let's see why that's such a problem. Apparently, people don't like it when we eat McDonald's. Um, hang on. <laughs> Uh, brought to you by <laughs> Bud Light, everybody. <laughs> Nothing wrong with having a beer every now and then. Hey, you know what? It's been a long day. Been dealing with a bunch of technology crap. Over it. So luckily all this is working. And Jay says, uh, low this morning of five. Yeah, you know the wind last night kept us warmer, guys. It was still warm out there. You know, I mean, it was still cold out there, but, uh, you know, I, the wind, uh, the, the gusty winds kept us up a little bit. I'm not too happy about it, but it is what it is. It happens sometimes, so chalk it up. Keep on coming. Um, hey, it was cold. That's all that matters. Yeah. When you know, it was that work outside, it was cold. Yeah. When you got wind chills of 15 below, it it, it uh, doesn't really matter beyond that point, I don't think. Um, <laughs> but like there we go. Yes. Yeah, yes, it is. Um, so, uh, we were thinking today, and I want to ask you guys who are in here, I was thinking today, just kind of sitting here, I was doing a little write-up, and um, if you were to be uh, a premium member, uh, say you're a premium subscriber and you pay us yearly, or monthly, or ev uh, every three months, would you prefer a video blog forecast or a blog type write up. So this reply on the chat here, video or blog? That's all I need to know. And, uh, and I'm just 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 curious. Uh, Mississippi State University. For him. For me. I didn't do that. <clears throat> yeah, Mississippi State University. I I have my degree in computer, computer networking and uh, information system security. So, not for weather. Uh, weather was a hobby for me. Uh, ham radio, stuff like that. So, video, 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 video. You know, it's weird that it, I see these uh, re responses to video because. Um, there we go. See, we get a couple of blogs. So I asked this question a little while ago, and people, I, most of the reply was blog. Yep. And uh, so it's always interesting to see what people prefer, what's easiest for them. Um, the reason I don't do videos very often is because it's very easy to get caught on a rant, and you just start talking about something, and then you kind of forget about what you're talking about, and you kind of lose focus of the of what we're trying to get to. So. That's why I do the blog. Um, but I could see during times of extreme weather when we're looking at a lot of data where a video would be useful. You know? I think, I think uh, you know, the, the add to it, I think that the, uh, when it comes to severe weather time, it might be a better idea of, of maybe doing a video blog here and there. I mean, you guys, you know, fill it in, but I, I, think, I think that that might be an idea. You know, between right. that, um, maybe not video blog all the time, but do a video blog. You know, when it's needed for a quick, quick viewing. Yeah, I, and I think I, I would agree with that. I mean, I think, you know, maybe during times of severe weather, um, we would make those those uh, available to everybody. You know, where we get time trying to explain to people. The the point of the premium stream is to you know, or the premium package is to give people as much uh, lead time as possible. You know, as much, give them as many days in advance as possible and talk about all the different models, talk about what we're seeing. At medium range and long range is basically, uh, what, 72 hours and beyond? Is that right? Mm, yeah. It's, yeah. Se it's 72 hours and beyond is, is medium to long range. So when we talk about medium, or short range, medium, and long range, 
uh, forecast or forecast discussion. Uh, we don't use forecast in our wording for the premium side. We just call it premium discussion. But basically, it's a, a it's medium to long range. So 72 hours and out uh, basically is the 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 time when models are really unpredictable, but that's when we take the most time at looking at the models and coming up and, and using our skill to to go and, and make that long discussion and you know that's what we feel like that you guys you know are willing to pay for mm -hmm. um, but on, on, the, on the other turn you know the you know the big thing is is the um, short range we feel like that you know one for safety and two you know, it just needs to be at that point in time. It's it's known by basically everybody. Everybody needs to have access to it. So that's why that happened. Yeah. You know, just recently and, and everything. So we're always tweaking. We 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 say this every week. We're always tweaking the um, the website and 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 everything. So I mean, I mean, tonight you're seeing a full 1080p. Uh, if anybody gets any geekier than this, 30 frames a second. Uh, we're running. Full bore on the uh, bandwidth, and uh, so yeah, it's going to be uh, really, really good quality. So, let's see. Someone asked earlier, can you explain photographs and how to read them? Um, in order for me to teach you how to read a photograph, I would need three or four hours to teach you how to read a photograph. I mean, in a nutshell. What these things are is, um, it's a graph that displays vertical and horizontal distribution of wind, okay? It, it tells us what type of wind we have, uh, basically, you know, coming out of a, of a skew-t diagram, uh, out of a sounding of a thunderstorm. Um, it, you know, different, different photographs will give you what they do is kind of, in a nutshell, and an easy way to explain this is, is determine storm type. So different shaped photographs can indicate a single cell thunderstorm, a multi-cell, a supercell thunderstorm. It depends on how the photograph looks. Whether you have a veering wind or a backing wind, uh, it depends on, you know, what type of situation you're in. Uh, I mean, a, a real nice looking photograph is going to come up and go all the way around and kind of have a real nice fine curve to it. Um, you know, and that, that is because you have, you know, your curvature um, on, your, on your photograph typically means that winds veer with height and they increase. So as, as the winds, as the curve goes up, the winds increase with height and uh, you know, that, that would help the development of a supercell thunderstorm. So, you know, and if you go over and you look here and you have a, you have a straight line, uh, basically a straight kind of slanted line up for your photograph, you're looking at a, at a multi-cell thunderstorm, maybe something like a, uh, a cluster or a squall line or a, a, a some sort of that. Um, single cell thunderstorm, you're not really getting, um, your, your wind shear is weak. You're not really getting a lot of shear. You're not getting a lot of a, a powerful updraft, okay? Um, and then your your photograph's going to look like a cur little cursive letter, like a little like it's got a loop in it, you know. Um, so a photograph basically can help you determine what type of storm you're going to be dealing with. Um, hopefully that helps. I mean, it, you, you get into a lot of uh, technical talk when you're coming into when you're talking about photographs, getting into you know, thermodynamics, you know, severe weather forecasting, looking at soundings and stuff like that. So um, it's, great to, it's great to know, it's great to look at, especially when you're planning a chase day. Uh, you know, you want to see what kind of uh, thunderstorms you're going to be dealing with. here could you do it could we do a tour of your lab someday kind of like an open house type thing <laughs> um not really uh because well, that's my it's, house this <laughs> it's his house i mean it's you know you know we do uh, everything out of here but we don't we're not really at a point it's not a 
public office yet. You know, we do everything out of the house, and um, you know, basically we. I mean, it's just this one room. Yeah, it's just what this you office. see. What you see is this. I mean, it's it's all these computers. Uh, behind the camera is actually a 110 inch projection screen. Uh, we have a projector mount on the ceiling, shine back up a projector. That's what we're looking at, so we can see ourselves. It's gonna be a room and, for activity uh, and everything. Um, the we used to have a couch actually in front of and it went away last night. So if you saw the picture from last night, the panoramic shot, there's now a built-in bookshelf in the corner that was, that I built last night. Yes, I built last night. And uh, so yeah, and actually right behind the camera is the cat box where the cats live. So um, yeah, there's it's it's, a, it's okay. I mean, what you see is the best part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is where all the madness happens. Uh, there's no reason to feel stupid. I mean, no, that's no, nah, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, we this this is just where we do it out of. You know, uh, we uh, there's really no reason for us to have any type of office space or building like that right now, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, we have the truck and then we have the office, but we, 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 it's quite a bit of equipment, you know, for the area that we have, so. Um, KD4WCL, um, basically we'll chase anywhere. If the risk is uh, high enough and we feel that it's, it's uh, a good enough chance that we would uh, be able to successfully gain enough video to, I guess, pay for the chase, or if we had a guarantee of somebody, you know, using our stream, um, or, you know, I mean, either way, I mean, if, if, if there was a reason or a good chance that we can go out there, uh, last year we went to Nebraska, uh, we went to Kansas uh, during the high risk out there. Um, so, I mean, we've been to Illinois easily. Uh, I mean, it's, we're talking an hour and a half drive to the Indiana-Illinois border. So, you know, we'll easily do that. We've been down to Kentucky. Don't really like doing that. It's really hilly. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to put on his usual and chase and everything gets deployed into the tornado. Um, we, we use for our particular setup, we have six high definition cameras. We have basically two handheld cameras. One is a um, DSLR digital camera, you know, the digital camera with the removable lenses. Uh, we use that both for video and um, uh, video and uh, pictures. And we uh, were also in the in the process. We have a third one. My brother actually is talking about going with us this year for for a few uh, trips, and he actually has a, has his own DSLR. But um, we have another handheld camera we use, and then we also have a couple little cameras that are similar to the GoPro cameras. So uh, we have a lot of camera equipment. So I mean, chasing wise. Laptop of some sort, um, you know, data connection, get radar, you know, keeps you safe. Obviously, that's not always the, the case. You, a lot of times you'll run out of data. Uh, there's a lot of places in Indiana actually still don't have data at all. So we ran into that. But, you know, definitely have the, the uh, <laughs> what's going on there? <laughs> and uh, definitely have the, uh, you know, experience and take the spotter training courses and stuff to be able to know what the clouds are doing and everything so you don't get yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, and do we have anything that deploys into a tornado? That is in the works. Yeah, it's in the works. Um, I don't want to expand on it yet, but it's in the works. <laughs> we also have our, we have a Davis weather station on our truck that will take wind speeds, temperatures, dew point. You know where where we're at as close as we can get to a tornado. You know, um, we don't have a vehicle where we can drive into the tornado, you know, like the Dominator. But we don't, you know, we don't have anything like that yet. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah. Any questions?
questions, guys? I want to touch real quick on our on our subscription side of things. Um, we've had a lot of good feedback. We've had some bad feedback. It, it, it happens. It is what it is. What um, does anybody have any questions about that? Any questions about the subscription or what it means or what you get and what you don't get? I want to make sure we we have that covered. <clears throat> hey, real quick, while we're waiting on uh, questions or anything about the subscription, uh -huh. we want we want those. So send questions about the subscription. But um, Shorty Awards, we haven't talked about it in a few days. Mm -hmm. Shorty Awards, uh, if you haven't heard about this, we are in the running for a nomination for the Shorty Award and the category of weather. If you have a Twitter account that you have used for a substantial amount of time, I'm talking like for like at least two months, um, for some reason they frown upon being used, in, you know, newer accounts. But if if you have an account that's you know somewhat seasoned that you use that you're watching this, go out and uh, I'll, I'll post the link here in our in our chat. And we'll also post the link after this Q and A to the uh, direct to the link for the for the Shorty Award. And um, right now it shows us in seconds. The the counting's a little off. Actually, in, in all actuality, we should be third. But it really doesn't matter as long as we're in the top six. We make the uh, the final nomination where we get voted at that point in time between uh, Reed Timmer, us, Scott McClellan, Foot Forecast MD. Kent Weather and Texas Storm Chasers. So between those six, we will be voted upon to possibly win this award. So uh, it'll be really cool. Um, so you got to have a Twitter account. It's got to be active for at least two months and uh, and work. So let's see here. I would love to know about how to read computer knowledge, basic knowledge maybe. Um, And I, I, there's really no way that I can. Um, there's really no way I can explain to you how to read a computer model through this. Uh, there, there's no way, guys. I can. Um, I mean, I can. Pick, I can pull up a model here in about uh, oh, 20 minutes. 8:45. We're going to be going through some computer models, talking about the forecast coming up for this week and, and next week. So I'll, I'll I'll walk you through what that stuff means on the model, but that'd be the most best I can do for you. I can't really. It just takes a lot of time to to learn that stuff. So um, if you're if you're still tuned in at 8:45, we'll have a, a forecast, um, an in-depth look at what we're seeing. Okay. And basically, that in-depth look is what we are writing our our you know. What's basically shown in the um, in the premium discussion. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can you purchase Anon fifty eight forty nine? Um, can you purchase purchase a subscription as a gift? Um, I have to think about that one. Actually, um, probably the best way to do that, if you could, send us an email at bamchase at gmail dot com, um, and we can. Uh, figure that out because there might I, I think we, what we might have to do is we might have to make some type of uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure we're gonna have to, to make make it where you make a payment of some sort and then make a coupon code I'd have to figure that out but I don't not sure if there's a, a real easy way of doing it but we can look into it so shoot us an email and we'll try to figure it out for you Posted that link for the Shorty Award um, thing. I, I just posted it up the top. So 
Uh, any good suggestions for a good wireless home re weather station that won't break the bank? The top of the line one that you will find, obviously, is the um, Davis uh, for home for home use. I uh, highly suggest the Davis ISS, which is the uh, uh, integrated unit that we have on the top of the truck. Uh, you'll see it in the pictures for the chase truck. Um, we use actually here at the house, um, and it's not 100% accurate. We, we tweaked actually, manually tweaked some of the sensors and made them a little bit better, but it took a little bit of tweaking. But we actually use um, the Oregon Scientific WSR uh, 98, I think is what it is. And uh, you can run multiple displays. Um, let, me, let me look that up real quick. Oregon Scientific. Yeah, WMR968 <clears throat> runs you about $200. Uh, we bought ours through Ambient. It uh, comes with the um, anemometer, the thermal hygrometer, and the rain gauge, uh, all separate units. Place them out wherever they need to go, and you get the uh, touch screen display. So. Someone just asked if we would be doing extracurricular activities while uh, we're chasing. Uh, no, that would not happen. Um, we're not going to swim or dance or anything like that in front of the camera. That's not a good thing. As some might think it's funny, uh, some get really mad and make ridiculous accusations over things. We've been down that road before. So some people would enjoy it because it would be funny, but some people don't, they can't handle it. They just think they need to freak out and, and call the chaser police and, uh, you know, whatever. So, What's snow prediction for East Central Indiana for Friday? Uh, we'll, we'll be talking about that in 15 minutes. 8.45 tonight. 8.45 in 15 minutes we will be doing forecast for the next uh, seven days. Tell you what to expect. Okay, so just make sure you tune in, and um, um, we will be doing that. Um, can you follow us even if you sign a waiver? No. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's. I guess we can't stop you from following us. It's one of those things where if you knew and saw us out there, it would be very hard. I'm not going to be happy with you. I've told a lady, I've pulled over once before and told a lady to stop following me because I knew what she was doing. She had a kid in the car. It's not responsible. Um, that's actually the day I caught a tornado on video in New Ross. Um, I, 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 it, it's that's a gray area. Um, we're working on something right now. We'll let you guys know, but uh, it, it, in the near future, there, there might be a possibility for something like that. But uh, not follow along, no. Um, APRS enabled to the beast. Jay, I'm working on that. Um, I uh, been looking at a couple of different radios now, so I got got a few in mind. So we'll. Uh, Yeah, we'll uh, figure that out. But yeah, I, I, I got a, I got a Kenwood up there. That's, you know, just a dual band two meter four forty. Um, so if I can get a, I'm trying to look for a nice. I want the, want another Kenwood or a Yesu, but just got to figure that out. I had a Yesu before and it burned up, so I'm not sure about that one. Can talk about what it is. General doing a hard one, you guys. Uh, we talked about it earlier, but just we'll touch on it real quick. It's basically an article that that this lady does, and and it's about uh, companies that that are going above and beyond, and and kind of new, and you know, tr just trying to do new things uh, out in the out in the world. So it'd be a really neat little thing. Um, let's 
see here. Oh, we got a lot. <laughs> I'd like to come out with an app. Uh, we just talked about this last night. Uh, probably be looking at getting the app going just prior to spring, so prior, uh, prior to March. Um, we're looking at probably it being, um, we're, there's a couple of different ideas between it. It, it. We're looking at, you know, it being both for free and both for the subscription base. The thing is, is the free stream does not work on mobile. So you would have to have the subscription to watch the stream. Uh, on your mobile, uh, so it's it's kind of up in the air right now. We're looking at possibly charging 99 cents for that just to cover the cost of of the maintenance of it, because um, we probably won't be the ones that will be uh, maintaining it. We'll have somebody else do that, uh, which we've been discussing. Um, but that's that's still not in stone yet. Are you doing Twister? It's a real thing. Uh, Never been the Universal Orlando, so can't answer that question. <laughs> uh, I Someone asked, um, N.5000 asked what type of uh, equipment we use on the chase vehicle, oh. and that's, I don't know if you answered that. I skipped over it. Um, we, uh, like I said, we, we have six to eight different high definition cameras. Uh, we also yeah, we have a, a Davis Pro weather station. Um, we can take measurements, wind speeds, dew point temperature, air temperature, uh, barometric pressure, um, wind chill, how much rain falls. Uh, just about any weather measurement we can take from that station, we'll, we'll try and take. Um, and also being out there to get getting eyewitness reports. Now that's the most important thing is eyewitness reports. Okay, because radar and all these people can estimate all these things, but seeing it and taping it and touching it is a big, is a whole different story. The big you know? thing is, is we had an incident last year where there was a possibility of a microburst, and radar only scans every eight minutes. Is that correct? The old one. Uh, the old one was six. Six now minutes. Now it's two. The, the old one was six or six minutes. The new one now scans the whole thing in two minutes. So it's obviously it's a lot quicker, but. There's a possibility of a microburst just east of where we're at right now, and uh, we captured it on radar, but the wind estimates were way off. And if we would have had that weather station at the time, we would have been able to measure the wind because we were sitting right there when it happened. It actually blew an entire barn right in front of us over and, and flattened it, and it took it and took a, a whole entire. Uh, Four foot diameter tree and uprooted the whole thing down to the ground. And you can actually go back on our Facebook and look at the pictures on there. There's a whole write up on our blog if you're a premium subscriber. You can look it up, all that. So, okay, let's uh, keep on here. Uh, Dustin asked, Can you tell me more about good colleagues or colleges to do weather program or courses and costs online as well? Um, you, you can do, uh, Mississippi State University offers a nice program. They do an operational meteorology or a broadcast meteorology program. Um, that costs you around $20,000 to do the whole thing. Uh, that's, that's including everything, books, tuition, and courses, and out-of-state tuition, and all that stuff. Uh, Twenty grand total for the whole program cost. Mississippi State University, they have a great program. A lot of very, very knowledgeable people that teach that program. Um, and Jeff Haby, a guy that runs weatherprediction.com, um, he also teaches that uh, program as well. He teaches classes in that program. Um, John Dishour out of left field comes out of nowhere and says, Ball State. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, John? Uh, he's a Ball State graduate. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, there's so many places to go. Um, you know, if you're looking to do just online and stay at home, my my recommendation, I guess, would be MSU. So, um, where is the difference in the major news channels here locally? Do you see all the same graphs, or is it technically that they all claim that they're using? Um, talking, they actually, they actually use all the same graphic system. Yeah, they actually. I mean, the GFS, the, the you know, all those models are all everybody's. It's available to everybody. Uh, all that stuff is all information anybody can access. It's all about how you interpret it. 
um, and how you, you know, how you uh, forecast applying common knowledge and common sense to, to a computer model forecast. Um, and, and kind of make, kind of to bring a good example to that would be um, what we've been talking about for snow chances here on Friday. Um, you know, on Monday, computer models wanted to suggest six inches or more of snow coming down and they have considerably dried up and, and uh, here are the last few runs. Um, it's a more progressive, faster, uh, suppressed solution, um, which, you know, that's been, that's kind of been the deal this year. Uh, that's kind of been, you know, we've had an active storm track, but they like to get suppressed to the south and they've been, they've been fast movers. So that, uh, when you apply that to, to a system that you're trying to forecast, you need to tell yourself, well, hey, this year we've had, this has been the rule of thumb, you know, for the most part. So um, jumping right on out there and saying we're going to get 10 inches of snow, um, you're just going to, you're just going to kill yourself because um, we're not, you know. So you have to be careful about how you uh, word and, and look at those models. Um, storm before it hits them it splits and it comes back together <laughs> it's just how it works it's not just Marion County it's anybody anybody you ask well oh, you know every time it gets Lafayette it splits and it's just how it is just just how it is there's really no I don't believe there's any real meteorological explanation for it you know I mean I'm sure people have their theories about it but I don't think there's anything that's dead set. That, that's gonna you know dead set makes it happen um, yeah, uh, weather, weather lady one, we're going to get into that in about five minutes. We're going to go over some of the data. 8.45, we're going over some data. So. Five more minutes. Hi, doggy. <laughs> yeah, the dogs are uh, running around here somewhere. How do they see the dog? I don't know. I think they hear them. Oh. I'm guessing you hear the dogs. <laughs> Stuff is coming from. Uh, um, let's see, John's talking about... Um, yeah, uh, yeah. John, what John? If you guys are in the chat room, uh, John Dishower obviously has has worked at multiple uh, news stations, local media stations, and what he's talking about is there's different products now. WSI um, and Weather Central are the same company now. They bought bought it out, but WSI had a system called TrueView Max Storm. It was an HD system, and uh, it's still still there, still available, but. Uh, Called Fusion now. Uh, well, there's two different. Uh, Weather Central is Fusion. Oh yeah. So you got you got Weather Central's products that they had, and you got WSI's one. Now they're all the same company, obviously, and they're, they're starting to combine them all together. But yeah, you a lot of the graphics, like for instance, Fox 59 right now. Obviously, we've been there, seen their system and everything. Uh, Wish TV, WTHR. They all use the exact same system, the exact same version. They've all been upgraded now. Um, if you look at their graphics side by side on the weather graphics portion, you'll notice they're almost completely identical. So they're the, basically the same template. So, And that template they download and just tweak it to what they want as color-wise and stuff. So, The Mooresville Shield. Guys, I'm going to get ready to go um, get these graphics so you're ready for a forecast. If you have any questions, just keep sending them over to Brian. Yeah, I need questions. <laughs> Very long. Uh, okay, I'm just refreshing here to see how many people are in here. Got 30. Got 36. Yeah, it's interesting though. 
John, it's always I, good information, yeah. especially for us to know. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely interesting. Distinction between the ratio of precipitation to snow will be polar temps higher ratio. Yes. Yes. Yep, yes. Uh, KSL forty eight. Yes, that that is very true. Uh, the lower the temperature, uh, the higher up, the fluffier the flakes are, the higher the ratio. The colder it is, you get what's called dendritic, Google it, dendritic growth. Um, basically, a snowflake is, uh, dendritic growth and a snowflake are all related to dust particles, believe it or not. But um, the colder the air temperature, um, especially when you're getting up in the 850 temperatures, negative 15 below, um, your, your growth of your snowflake expands. It's like it, it just keeps coming out. It's a big fluffy, well, it's a big fluffy uh, uh, type of snow, very dry snow. So uh, you can make a case that the clipper coming in here Wednesday night into Thursday that we're going to talk about here in just a second is um, may, maybe a 20 to 1 ratio, okay, with the, with the cold air uh, that's still sticking around the Arctic air that's still here, uh, we would be looking at perhaps a 20 to 1 ratio. And with the QPF we have two one hundredths, maybe three one hundredths of an inch. You could maybe someone could fluff it up to a half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch here. Uh, Wednesday night into Thursday. Any more questions? It's uh eight it's uh now eight forty five. Anybody got a couple last second questions here? We're gonna get into the forecast and then uh we'll take a few more questions depending on how long we got left, so <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, Matt Wiggins, that's a good question. Uh, Amanda is not home. She is at work until nine o'clock, and uh, the dogs have not been trained on that yet. So, unfortunately, uh, I will be waiting till after this is done. Uh, do you ever discuss with Fox Fifty Nine your decisions you make for forecasting? Yeah, oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> I talked to Brian on the phone last night for probably an hour and a half. Uh, we just sometimes, sometimes no, sometimes yes, you know, we'll, we'll sit there and just talk about what he's seeing and uh, I'll ask him what he thinks about something and, you know, we'll, we'll discuss it. Um, when there's, whenever there's something coming in, you know, that looks interesting, we'll talk about it and just sit there and crunch the numbers together. So, yeah, we talk, you know, uh, I learned a lot from what I, of what I know from him. So, you know, whatever, um, you know, whenever I have a question, he's my go-to guy. So. Um, oh yeah, we, we talk all the time. Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, cook. I, I interned with Fox 59 for a year. Um, I I mean, I have uh, you know the ability to. I have what I need to work on air. I just haven't pursued it that hard yet. I've had offers before, um, not that great of offers. Um, I've had offers in Mississippi and Illinois um, and uh, other, I don't know, Ohio. Ohio. I just haven't, uh, we're really trying, I'm really trying to pursue this. You know, my, my goal is to do this. My goal is to be a consultant of weather in the state of Indiana and do all kinds of, as much as I can, weather related in Indiana. That's my goal. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But so far, guys, we've we've done very well with premium clients, and subscriptions, and storm chasing. And this this month has been very good for us. So eventually, I might get into the television side of things. I don't know. You know, uh, we'll see. Um, all right, let's get into the data. Um, I'm going to give you my input on the data, uh, what I'm seeing. Um, you know, and then we can. Uh, uh, kind of go over, you know, what it is that I think uh, is going to happen over the next few days, and, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, are we up on the? Yep. Look at my yep, yeah. up. Okay. Uh, here's a look, guys, at the um, uh, what we call our teleconnection indices. Um, line. This is a line graph. Uh, for all for four different computer models, you have your GFS, your European, your GFS ensembles, 
know, your Canadian, your Canadian ensembles. And basically, what we're looking at here, you know, is, is three things I like to touch on quite a bit. The, the uh, NAO, the AO, and the PNA. The North Atlantic Oscillation, the Arctic Oscillation. You know, we can uh, touch on the values of these to try and help predict a little bit longer range weather 10, maybe 15 days out. Um, you can see here the NAO, okay? Um, when this thing goes negative, when it gets down into this category here, is when we start to look for what we call a block or Greenland block, a traffic jam in the weather pattern, okay? Um, is there something there on the east coast, uh, off the east coast, and a little bit north and east of, of the United States that will jam up the pattern, get a storm to spin up along the east coast and pull the cold air down behind it? Okay, when this thing trends neutral or positive, I can almost guarantee you that we're not going to be dealing with any major winter storms. Okay, we've got a slight dip here negative. Okay, uh, and there is a little bit of a storm here coming through. Uh, I wouldn't really call it a. It may be a storm. It is a storm. Okay, but it's not a major storm. Um, that thing is coming uh, for Friday. So the date Friday is the 25th. So you can see here. Um, the NAO begins to go negative, but it's not negative before the storm. So I don't think we're going to have a major East Coast snowmaker, okay? I don't think we're going to be looking at a blizzard there. You would need the NAO or the block to be there before the storm gets there, okay? Um, let's take a look now at the PNA. The PNA is something that we want to be positive. And what I mean by a positive PNA is basically that represents height anomalies, uh, whether the, the heights are going up, you know, the heights are going down in, in an area of the country. So a positive PNA, basically by all computer models here, uh, looks to be a general, uh, agree, a, a general agreement now that a, a ridge will set up again in, as we get into February in the eastern uh, portion of the Pacific Ocean or on the west coast of the country. Okay, And what that's going to mean is, is that will allow for colder temperatures for the central and eastern portions of the country, warmer temperatures for the western and northwestern portions of the United States. So uh, the positive PNA um, allows basically for that, it's another uh, tool that will allow, or not tool, another key to the ingredients that will allow the cold air to continue to come the way it's coming. And it will also kind of help redirect storm traffic in through the central U.S. Um, so it's positive right now. We can see that. That's what's kind of helping direct that small system that's coming over uh, here for Friday. But again, guys, it dips negative. And I can tell you, we do have a warm-up coming next week. We will get back into the 40s. Uh, the, the, the charts are showing warmer air is coming. The PNA is going negative. A negative PNA means higher heights over the southeastern portion of the country. You get a ridge in the southeastern portion of the United States. It's colder in the northwestern portion of the country. Okay, that's the PNA. Coming to the AO, the Arctic Oscillation here. That we want to be negative. Okay, and we can see it's negative right now. It's way down there. I mean, we're we're dealing with uh, some record cold across the northern portion of the of the country. Okay, um, but check it out here. Um, it warms way up as we get into February. And one thing I was thinking about today is we've got an indicator that we have the PNA that may be redirecting some storm traffic, giving us maybe some shots of cold air behind the storm, but we're going positive on the Arctic Oscillation as we get into February. The way this looks to me, guys, is that February may be a transition month. Oh, it is a transition month, but it may be a month where we're dealing with warm, cold, warm, cold spells, and perhaps Perhaps, now this is not set in stone, this is just my opinion, perhaps we get into an early season uh, major severe weather outbreak like we did last year. It, the, it's very similar to the way last year looks, okay? So that is something that's kind of tweaked, uh, that's kind of caught my interest. Um, it does look to warm up next week. And in fact, the CPC just issued um, their latest outlook. I want to show you that. They just issued their latest uh, Outlook for, if I can find it here, guys. There we go. Pull it up here real quick. Their latest 90-day uh, outlook uh, for the next, uh, you know, basically three months. 
Take a look at the temperature outlook, okay? This is the latest. Check out how warm it's going to be in the southern portion of the country here, even as we get into the central plains. EC is equal chances, okay? So we, we talk about our teleconnections, and we say we think it's going to get warmer, and here it is. Uh, it looks like the warmth is coming. Um, the, the negative P&A is where the cold hangs on in the northwestern portions of the country. We'll check it out. Below normal cold now being predicted for the northwestern portion of the country over the next three months. We talked about the PNA also redirecting storm traffic, maybe over the central portions of the U.S. Check it out. Above normal precipitation expected for the next 30 days, or 90 days, I'm sorry. So that leads me to believe we could have a little bit more of an active storm pattern, um, not in the form of snow um, as much as we'd like it to be, but it, I think it's going to be up and down. We're going to have a, a back and forth bout here. Um, I don't see any cold lock. Uh, if that makes any sense. Um, so it's very interesting to see these two uh, charts here from the CPC. They've done very well this year. Um, so the next 90 days from NOAA is saying above normal precipitation, okay, and equal chances at temperatures. Okay, above normal in the northeast, way above normal here in the southwestern portion of the country. Um, how are we doing on comments? Good morning. These people listening? Okay. Um, so now we're going to head over um, back and take a look. I know a couple of you are curious about the storms coming in here uh, tomorrow night um, and into Thursday. Let's take a look at the morning European run, okay? Um, and I want to show you where this low is setting up. Um, as we get in uh, to the 850 millibar temperatures 48 hours out, that's North America, that's not. There's a little disturbance that's going to come down, okay, tomorrow night into um, Friday or into Thursday, and I need to get back to where I lost my spot here. Um, hang on one second, guys. Let me get back to where I was. Here, I, get right over here. I just want to get back to the model menu. That actually went One second here, guys. Let me get a. Let me pull up here. Our I want to pull up back another model menu here to look at, um, so we can touch on. touch on the NAM computer model here as we get into tomorrow, uh, tomorrow evening, okay? And let's take a look now at the uh, surface pressure and precip, okay? Take a look um, as we get into Wednesday afternoon, uh, we begin to see a little bit of a disturbance coming down, a little bit of a clipper. Check out the moisture now uh, that has started to form just over Illinois and then into Indiana. Uh, this is the NAM solution. Um, so we, we, we kind of got an idea now that uh, a little burst of snow will develop. But check out, see this, this line here, the, we've got 528, 522, okay, these lines of thicknesses. Uh, this is a way to measure how cold it is. Now as we get into tomorrow night, we can see a burst of snow basically north of I-70 and north and east, okay. These little clipper systems can be feast or famine, really. Uh, but we think, you know, maybe a half inch, perhaps an inch of snow out of this system um, as it scoots on by. Higher ratios, okay? QPF out of this thing is maybe two one hundredths, three one hundredths at best. The GFS came in with no QPF. Uh, the European, the NAM, and the RPM suggest a coating, maybe a half inch of snow, Wednesday night into Thursday, I 70 in north and in central Indiana, okay? Um, and here's kind of how we can, uh, how I can show you that. This is the accumulated snowfall from uh, a mediagram. Basically this takes all the computer forecast models and kind of shows us what, 
how much snow the, the data is thinking that we'll see. Okay, this is based off a 20 to 1 ratio. You can see the times here. This is for Wednesday afternoon. The snow looks to start sometime Wednesday around 2 p.m. Okay, you see a little spike here in snow accumulations, uh, a model average of around a half an inch. Okay, so okay, for the city, maybe a half inch of snow Wednesday night into Thursday on, on a 20 to 1 ratio. So let's get back now over on to the um, European forecast model three days out, and we're looking for our system that um, is coming in for Friday, okay? Um, and basically, kind of what we want to look at is, and what I want to show you is how this system has began to suppress itself, um, how it's began to uh, become a lot more progressive. It's dried up a lot. Um, you know, I don't think we're going to be seeing the snow that we had originally thought we were going to see. Uh, but you can see a little disturbance here, right through here, Friday morning, okay? European putting out around a fifteenth of an inch, um, uh, around uh, maybe, I don't know, with, with snow ratios 15 to 1, 20 to 1, maybe a 2 or 3 inch snowfall here Friday morning. Uh, the snow would be coming down pretty hard for the Friday morning commute, but it would quickly exit the state and be out of here by Friday evening, uh, and we would be left with the northwest wind. Now, if that storm lays down the snow, here's the meteograms uh, for this system. If that lays down the snow that we're looking at, we could be looking at around, oh, you know, two, two and a half inches. Again, um, I don't think it's going to be a big system. Yeah, some stuff can change, um, but I don't, I don't see it being a major snowmaker. It may be enough for some of you all out there to plow. I think some of you will have some lots and some sidewalks to clear. Um, I wouldn't look for anything major. Okay. So we get back over here, um, that system departs. The next system comes in um, Sunday night into Monday. This system here may actually pose a threat for some freezing rain or ice, okay? Um, it's still far out. We've got two systems to look at before it gets here. <clears throat> but sun, uh, Sunday night into Monday, we could be looking at perhaps a wintry mix of precipitation, and then it would easily turn to all rain. Uh, here comes the warm-up I was telling you about, and then another shot of cold air. So it's, it's the warm, cold, warm, cold deal. Uh, perhaps by next, uh, by next Tuesday into Wednesday, um, we could be into the, in, maybe even into the 50s again, um, depending on, uh, you know, the, the moisture and the, how everything sets up. But um, positive P&A, guys, this is a, or a negative P&A, this is a prime example. The ridge in the southeast, the cold in the northwest. This is a negative PNA, okay? So keep that in mind. That really does help um, in, in predicting a little bit longer range weather. Okay, so I want to show you the amount of snow we're projected to get over the next seven days because it's not all that impressive. Uh, this is based off of a 10 to 1 ratio, so we may need to add a little bit to that. It may be a little bit colder. Um, but here we go, guys, out to 168 hours. <coughs> you can see, um, you know, not a whole lot of, of snow uh, forecasted for Indiana. That little system will come through, maybe give us enough for uh, three, maybe four inches. You know, this is counting Wednesday night and then counting Friday morning, okay, for total snowfall. So <coughs> you can kind of see the path that Clipper takes. Uh, it looks to ride this area just right here and kind of go out to the coast, okay? Um, Northern Tennessee, I know you're asking about some snow, maybe an inch, two inches. Central Indiana, uh, you know, like again, perhaps a band of, of three inches, but <coughs> no major, <coughs> major snowstorms. I saw a post the other day, some guy was trying to say he was gonna get uh, 26 inches plus up here in the northeastern portions of the country. <laughs> I have no idea where he's getting that from. Um, but again, this is the morning European. I just wanted to stress the amount of snow that that we will not be getting, really. I mean, um, to start the week, I thought we would have more snow than this, but the system has become, has began to dry up a little bit. It's suppressed and it's faster, okay? Um, let's take a look at one more thing here I want to I go over with you. Um, 
you know, we'll get into the long range ensembles of the European forecast model, um, and I want to show you what it's looking at for uh, the potential warm up as we were talking about next week. I know you're all wondering about the long range. Okay, we'll get into uh, North America, we'll go out, take it out to 168 hours. Here comes the warm up, okay? Um, big system here, uh, low. Here's your ridge, here's your uh, positive uh, or your negative PA but your positive PNA beginning to build in behind it, okay? Here's your ridge beginning to establish itself off the coast of California, but we have a nice uh, double barrel low here uh, that will be moving through the area next Tuesday. This is next Tuesday morning, but check it out, guys. 850 millibar temperatures approaching uh, 8 to maybe even 10 degrees uh, up above. So if we get some sunshine, real strong southwest wind there, we could be talking temperatures <coughs> back into the 50s next week. Could it mean a severe weather event? Possibly. But the models showed the same thing last week for this week. Okay, it showed a big warm-up. It never happened. Um, but, you know, it's something that I think could actually happen this time based on the ridges and the blocks in place that, and that are not in place. Okay, so we'll get back out here real quick. Take it out to 216 hours. Okay, you see that system comes through, check out the polar vortex, here it is, it's charging up again, okay, big, big positive PNA, okay, negative AO is beginning to retreat, okay, your, your big time high is beginning to go back up, but you do have your positive PNA, so you, it's hard to really say how far south this cold air is going to come and how far south it's going to stay. We know it's coming back because it's winter time. We don't know how long it's going to hang on. Okay, it's kind of transient, right? You can see here's out to 10 days. This is 10 days out from the ensembles. Um, we get another ridge here that develops here off the southeastern portion of the country. Okay, that will begin to usher in yet another uh, episode of some warmer air. So the consensus is, you know, it's cold right now. It's going to warm up. It's going to get cold again. It's going to get warm again. Um, we've got a snow chance Wednesday night into Thursday, maybe a half inch. We've got a snow chance Friday morning for the Friday morning commute, a couple inches possible then. We'll know more on that tomorrow. Okay? So that's kind of where we're at. Hopefully I didn't lose your confusion. Um, but hey, this is what it looks like 10 days out. This is your outlook for the next 90 days. Above normal uh, uh, temperature chances equal chances here. Precipitation could be above normal. That would be good for the drought. Okay? Let's take it back to the... Uh, we got 9.05 right now. We'll take it back to any last questions and see if we have any. Um, I think you answered them all. Okay. Um, sorry, guys. It, it's, I, I can't read the chat and answer your questions here. Uh, let me catch up here on this real quick. Yeah, I don't see any blizzard coming in. Um, equal chances technically means it could be warmer, it could be colder. Um, that that that's stage where I just talked about not knowing how far south the cold's going to come, um, you know, where it's going to go, th there's some gray area there, okay? You can't accurately predict 90 days out. You can give an idea. And that's kind of what the equal chances mean. Yeah, I think, I, I really do think the next couple weeks will be up and down. I really do. Um, I don't see a cold lock. Again, um, you know, we did just undergo what we call a sudden stratospheric warming where an intrusion of warmer air came up into the stratosphere. Um, it's basically almost like you take a, uh, you sit on a weather balloon or on a water balloon and it pops and all the water comes down. Well, the, the SSW, the stratospheric warming, kind of makes the, the, the cold polar air kind of trickle down. Okay? Um, that's a whole other story there. but. Um, Yeah, John just answered it um, perfectly. So, yep, definitely will be an up and down uh, pattern coming up over the next 10 to 15 days. 
And guys, the only reason I showed the 90-day outlook is because uh, the CPC has done a very good job this year. I, uh, they really have. They have done an excellent job in predicting um, temperature and precipitation swings. Um, so, you know, we'll see. If this is right, I, I think the first part of severe weather season could be active. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I don't really like to get into the fork, to the long range forecasting, but from what I'm seeing, it's a, I mean, it's a familiar setup to last year. Yeah. It's looking like last year, where we had that big event in March. Okay. I've talked, Moss. I've even talked to you about this, um, where we had that big event in March last year, where we've we've seen the teleconnections look the same. Um, you know, we'll see. Um, we'll see. Yeah, John D. They they did have that. Uh, I think you're talking about the prior year. I don't think they had it for this year. But the prior year, yeah, they had uh, above normal uh, precept for the winter. We're gonna look it up real quick. I think they actually did have it for this year. Was it for this year? Mm -hmm. I know last year they had it. I know last year it was totally off. Because I remember seeing it. I was I was actually in the um, in the uh, telephone conference for that one. I was laughing the whole time. Luckily, I have a mute button. <laughs> well, the official. The official um, outlook was dry, actually equal chances um, from December, January, and February, equal chances and actually drier in portions of northern Missouri, Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and some of the Dakotas, they actually had it drier than normal, uh, wetter than normal south. Uh, I'll post an image here, this was the, I'll, I'll post a link in here to the chat room so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, yeah, John, I definitely wouldn't want that job. <laughs> I really wouldn't. And especially, um, yeah, that's what it is, you know. I mean, it, when you get that far out, it's a crapshoot. It's an educated guess, you know. Um, it makes my head hurt, really, thinking about it. So. Um, probably a lot of rain in March, April, May, back to school. Uh, weather lady, I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of rain. According to these guys, there is. There's going to be above normal precipitation, or a chance of it anyways. I don't know. We don't, we don't go that long that long yeah. out. I mean, it, I mean, again, like we said, it's a crapshoot. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a shot in the dark. I mean, you might as well just cover your eyes and draw a map. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things. So You can base it off pattern recognition. You know, we saw this pattern last year. What worries me is, is it, will it be the same this year? <coughs> that's what that's what we're saying. Will it be an early season severe weather outbreak, and come May first, will it be done? Because May first last year, after New Ross tornado, that was it. Yep. But we were done chasing after that. So um, we don't want that. We really don't. Because it's boring. Moss, I saw that discussion um, that you just posted. Um, I mean, I agree with it. I really do. Um, that's, you know, kind of, and like I said, the, the thing that really kind of backs my opinion on that is, is the setup right now throughout North, North America, um, the, where the ridges are in place, where your troughs are in places. Uh, whenever there's a ridge, there's a trough, and there's a ridge, there's a trough, and there's a ridge, there's a trough. Okay, that's that's weather. So, um, you know, I, I I think that that's certainly possible. I think next week we could be looking at some severe weather. However, like I said, the, the European showed this last week for this week because yeah. I posted an image on on the Facebook about it. So, um, but. Pretty good response to that, people. Uh, higher totals to the north for Wednesday. Uh, snow, snow for this Wednesday? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 
And by higher totals, I mean maybe three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch in a spot or two. It depends on how cold it's going to be. This is not going to be a major system. I saw a local meteorologist put out one to two with locally three inches of snow today. I'm not going to mention who that was, but guys, that's why, that is why meteorologists get a bad rap because of crap. That's freaking crap. No one is going to get three inches of snow Wednesday night into Thursday. It's not going to happen. There's nothing that says it can't. There's nothing out there that says three inches. You, you would have to have a, a God, with three one hundredths, you'd have to have a 90 to 1 snow ratio. I don't know what you'd have to have. Something stupid. Um, yeah, the meteorologist tweeted it. You can, I'm sure you can find him. He's out there. It's not hard to find him. But I'm not going to mention names. But guys, that's why that's why people say, well, you don't know how to predict the weather. Well, you know, you just can't throw out predictions. I don't understand that stuff. I don't get why people Models are guidance, and that's it. You have to make your prediction from the models by combining different models together. Take your use your head. Your, use your head. <laughs> that's where we say yeah. we put the human element in our forecast. Yeah. That's what we mean. John says don't put that past in the, Yeah, no kidding. You got that right. Yeah. From that other system. What was it, John? Did you say it was forty three to one for that one system? For uh because I know you I saw you tweet him. Did you say it was a because they were basing that off of a 43 to 1, is that correct? <coughs> Which, 43 to 1, you would have to be... I just want to see... Roughly. I, I thought I had it on here. Guys, let's wrap it up. Does anybody got any last minute questions? Anybody want to ask us anything? Um, on the subscription side of things, we've had we've had a very good week. We've had a lot of people sign up, uh, and a lot of people like what we're doing. And they they send us emails, really good feedback. Um, we what we're doing is we're posting all the model guidance, all different models, and we're talking about what we're seeing in each model, and we're giving our opinion of that model. Okay. Um, we're just keeping it real is all we're doing. Um, we're just saying this is what this says, this is what that says, this is what we think will happen. Okay. Um, as of yesterday morning, there was a nine model average of around four or five, maybe six inches of snow for Friday. That's changed. Okay. That's gone away. Okay. Um, at a twenty to one ratio, so the the system is drying up for Friday. But any questions about that? Uh, please uh, let me know. Yeah, John's exactly right. That's what we're trying to tell people. <laughs> um. All right. Wow, you're on the road. Oh, we always post. Well, if, if it's you Indiana, know. we're always posting. You know, we're always keeping our our eyes on the on the radar and warnings and things like that. We're we're trying to post as much of the warnings as we can for, for the state or the surrounding areas of the state. Um, I mean, when we're out chasing, we're going to be posting. We, we have full data access now and, and multiple data connections, so we'll be, we'll be posting while we're on the road. So, uh, I, you might be talking about some type of text message warning system or whatever. Um, you know, uh, yeah, that, that's what I thought. Uh, you know, the thing is, is I guess really our opinion about it is, is don't rely on these things. 
I mean, yeah, they're great, but weather radio. Go get you a weather radio. That's the best way to do it. Uh, get you a nice, um, something like a Midland. Um, kind of like this guy here. Midland, you know, no weather radio. It's got the same codes. Program them in for your county. It goes off only for your county and uh, makes you a loud noise, so on and so forth. You can put batteries in this. You can take it on, your, on the road with you. Um, for out and about, um, there's multiple things like, um, oh, what was that guy called? There was a, there's, there's a couple websites out there. Um, we actually got uh, offered a free account to try it out. We haven't even really messed with it, but there's an account that's out there. If you Google it, it, there should be a nice website out there. It's from a guy down south. So, <clears throat> And John D is right. They're just as important as smoke detectors. So I, I work in the life safety field. Uh, I do fire alarms. And uh, he's right. So, Yep, we did have. I, I was at the, the Super Bowl. It was 60 degrees last year. So, yeah. Any questions, guys, about the, the website and the, and the subscription side of things? Any questions about that? Uh, please ask. Me Problems now. with signing up, signing in, paying, whatnot. We had some, some questions about uh, last night. We had a bunch of questions about, uh, I don't have a PayPal account. How do I pay? Um, just below the, the PayPal login, it says pay as a guest. Click on that. Fill out the form. It's your name, address, you know, normal uh, stuff that you would normally use to pay for a product, and uh, click pay, and then it'll ask you if you want to at that point in time make a PayPal account. You can say skip it. As soon as you finish that, it pays and goes. So. <laughs> yeah, Dustin, that was all you. <laughs> well, let me post a link here, guys, to any um, any questions you might have about our registration. This will send it that way to you. Uh, you can click on that link. It'll tell you all about kind of what we're doing and what it costs and all that good stuff. So, um, after we do that, um, basically, we're gonna wrap it up for the night. Um, if anybody that you know that wants to watch this, or if you want to rewatch it, if you miss something or whatever, um, as soon as this is over, I'm going to stop this, and then we'll uh, we'll get it processed on the YouTube. It'll post out the YouTube, and you can watch it, fast forward, do whatever you need to do. So um, we're going to get off here, get seven day forecast up and running, and uh, get you guys some more information out there. So uh, we'll see you guys later. Have a good evening, everybody.